Sometimes you know what, dude? You're, you're like you France. You're like France. You're a member of NATO, but you're a pain in the ass to everybody else. <laughs> On a recent episode of the PBD podcast, things got pretty intense during a discussion about the Russia-Ukraine situation and other related topics. Patrick Bet David found himself in a position where he had to confront his co-host, Adam, over some of the comments Adam was making. According to Patrick, Adam's views were too woke and out of touch, leading to a heated exchange. In this clip, you'll see how Patrick felt compelled to set the record straight and challenge his co-host's perspective. Let's dive into what happened when things got tense on the podcast. Putin were two hundred billion my boy, dollars. That's my boy. That's your guy. That's I my know guy. it. Um, it's my guy. Unless we hold him to account, he'll keep stealing and he'll keep thieving in this kleptomaniac autocracy that's called Russia. Keep in mind one thing: the president of Russia. Pull this up, Rob. Pull up salary. The president of Russia makes about one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars a year. In America, it's four hundred thousand. You know, right? It was right there. $120,000 per annum, not in rubles. How is someone that makes that amount of money worth so, $200 so billion? I love that you're bringing this up. So this leads me to one thing. If this is what you really believe about that people who do this, then in 2024 on November 5th, you're only voting for one person. Because that one person is not using the government's money to run. That one person used his own money to run. RFK you're talking about? Not RFK. Oh. That, that guy's using... Nikki? You know, no, it's only oh, one Trump. guy. You know who okay. he is. Got so, meanwhile, if you want to find that net worth before and after, Rob, if you want to pull up, you know, Obama's, um, I don't know, Clinton's and Biden's net worth before or and Bernie after. Bernie or Pelosi. If you can do this, this would be a great exercise for Adam because I like where Adam's going if with any of them you know, are if, billionaires, if, I'd be shocked. Well, if but you can, 200 billion, richest man in the yeah, world. Yeah, that's, that's the one right level. there. So zoom in, zoom in, that one right there. So that's pretty interesting. So uh, Trump's net worth before running, four and a half billion. Now it's two billion. Obama's three million, now 40 million. Clinton's 500,000, now 100 million. And then you got Biden's is on that list as well. So, you know, you're kind of interesting the angle and direction you're taking. I didn't think you were going to be this bold this morning with this story, well, specifically the fact that it impacts America. And the difference between us and them is you're right. In a communistic nation, you can steal more and get away with it because there is less regulation. In a country like ours that there's more regulation, you have to be more deceptive and conniving and more slick to be able to steal money. And you got to give respect if you're if you're saying your your value and the fact that you don't like people going into politics and then all of a sudden becoming rich and having houses in Hawaii and, you know, paddle boarding, you take a day off, you don't take a day off and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a very, very good political point you just made right there. Mr. You, Adam, you so. bring up a great point. Yeah. And I, I, I as someone that minored and uh, double majored in sarcasm, I see what you're doing. I respect you. <laughs> Uh, there's a big difference between, and not that I'm advocating, there's a big difference between 40 million, 100 million, and 200 billion dollars. So when you In this discussion, the real issue isn't the amount of money being talked about, but rather the principle of how it's being handled. Patrick Bet David is right about this, but I think he's even more right than he or anyone on the PBD podcast realizes. In Russia, things operate by a completely different set of rules. Over the past few years, especially since 2020, we've started to realize just how much we're being misled. It's not just that Russia and Putin play by different rules than the US, but we're also being fed propaganda here in America that likely paints a worse picture of Russia and Putin than might be accurate. When people like Tucker Carlson visit Russia and interview Putin, they often face backlash. Why? because it offers a glimpse into life in Russia and a perspective on Putin that isn't filtered through American media or government narratives. Patrick is right in saying that Russia operates differently, but the bigger point is that we, in America, are also victims of propaganda. For years, we looked down on other countries, assuming their people were misled by their governments, only to realize recently that we too are influenced by our own government's messaging. The wake-up call came around 2020 when it became more obvious just how much misinformation we've been fed, making us question the narrative we've been given about Russia and other nations. Here's the real difference, homeboy. The difference is 
That's a guesstimated. The difference here is this is audited. <laughs> yeah. So do you, you can do you question this guesstimation? I I I, I, I of From course Fox I question, business? question Of course I question the guesstimation. Will I say he's worth a couple billion dollars? Yes. Would I say he has used the power that he has to take money away XYZ? Yes. But you know what else that does? Mm-hmm. If you're going to go there, no problem. Would I say no one's increased their net worth more because this person's learned his habits from uh, Putin? You know who's probably gone the richest if that guesstimation applies to people that steal money from their government and nobody catches them? There's this guy down the street from Russia, okay? They're like a block away from each other. What's Zelensky? this guy's name? Zelensky. Oh, the guy with the green So shirts? you know what? The Zelensky guy yeah. has probably increased his net worth the most the last two years, Adam, if that's correct. And I think probably maybe Putin behind closed doors angry because Zelensky is getting richer than him. Because there is no way in the history of mankind we've had a better beggar a better fundraiser, a better guy that goes around and raising money and pleading and crying and all this stuff, and then somehow, some way, he's getting richer well, and doing commercials with clothes that cost three, four, five, ten thousand dollars with him something? and his beautiful wife. If you're enjoying this content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. Yeah, your name was PBD Zelinsky. Okay, and you were invaded by. This thug called Vladimir Putin, what would you do? What do you mean? Would you not go beg, plead, borrow money? Would you not appeal to NATO and your European allies? Would you not try to go and basically market yourself to the I, world I, as, help me out you, here, you I've been just, invaded? You just, you just, what would you do? You just changed the story. I don't know, I'm asking you a question. No, no, you're changing the story. Okay. What I'm saying to you is, one could make the argument for Zelensky also being one of the richest people in the world who's stealing money, and that's speculation. What Fox is also doing is they're speculating. By the way, a speculation that the world probably believes in. No one's questioning that. But the difference is Mm -hmm. we don't have law and order in Russia the way we have law and order in America, which is why we like law and order. But for you to believe that if the law and order and the ability and the control was available to the Clintons and Obamas and others to create that kind of wealth, they're probably going to sleep at night envious that they can't steal that kind of money I, and I, use their politics to make a lot of money With all due respect, themselves. my CEO, my friend, Patrick David, this has nothing to do with the Clintons and Obamas. And we can talk about but that. But it does, you sort of ch- No, no, it does. And does. I believe they should be held to account. But they're not going they're to. But never going to. They're not going to. Okay. But, but, oh. okay. Okay, can we, so everyone wants to, Tom wants to be all pissy pants over here because I'm talking about Vladimir Putin. Tom's been quiet for a while. Good, that's why we're doing well today. Now the, oh, Tom, relax, we're joking here, here, guys. You know what, dude? Sometimes you're you're like France. You're like France. You're a member of NATO, but you're a pain in the ass to everybody else. (laughs) Good one, Tom. No one understood that one. (laughs) Yes, But here's my question. Can everyone be wrong, but can Putin be way more wrong? So here's a, here's a question before country, you answer that. Whatever, listen, it, this guy's a former KGB member. I don't know how many times I have to tell you. He's a gangster. Yeah. You know what gangsters do? They do gangster shit. They do gangster <laughs> stuff. Rico. But then the Rico laws don't apply to politicians. Do you not understand that? Do you not understand that the way to go into, you, you start off and you say, I want to make a lot of money. If you start off and you say, I want to make a lot of money or you want to have a lot of power. If you want to make a lot of money, you go into business, you have to bust your ass, build equity, work your ass up for a couple of decades, and then you're going to have some money, right? But if you go in politics, how do you make money in politics? How do you actually make money in politics? Crony capitalism, lobbyists, it's shady business. Which means means the part that I'm agreeing with you is Mm -hmm. anybody who has been a lifelong member of politics, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and they get rich, they're stealing from you, period. Anybody that all of a sudden creates that kind of wealth, that's what they're doing. The reason I disagree with Adam and align more with Patrick Bet David is pretty simple. Putin isn't directly affecting me, but Zelensky and Ukraine are, through the tax dollars we're sending overseas. Every time I earn, spend, or just hold on to money, it feels like there's a tax being taken from me. And where is that money going? Not to Putin. He doesn't need it. It's being sent to Ukraine with billions going to Zelensky. And that's where my issue lies. Adam makes a lot of money, so I don't understand why he's so upset about Putin enriching himself off his own people. Putin isn't taking anything from us. 
but Zelensky and Ukraine are benefiting from our taxes. To me, that's a much bigger problem. It feels like an easy, virtue-signaling stance to say, Putin is bad. Sure, he's not the most moral guy. But if you criticize Putin and at the same time defend Ukraine and Zelensky, I think you're missing the point. I see Ukraine as more of a threat to our wallets than Russia. Not that I'm defending Putin, but right now, the real problem for us is the money flowing out of our country to fund wars that we never voted for. We didn't vote to send hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine, and we didn't vote for involvement in wars in the Middle East. Yet, we're forced to fund them, and that's hurting us. Meanwhile, the focus on big bad Putin feels like a distraction. He's not taking our money or threatening our lives, at least not directly or right now. So from my perspective, we should prioritize our own interests. We should ask who's really taking money out of our pockets. That's not Putin. It's the policies that drain our resources to fund conflicts overseas that we didn't sign up for.